the Mary and the Lizzie, they were made right here. But you'll never see the likes of them, I fear. They were the finest ever sailed the sea. They were built by the hands of men like me. Thank you, Dad, for all your skill. My name is Bill McKinley, and I was born in 1932. When I left school in 1949, I had a temporary job, and it still works, but then afterwards, having always been interested in ships, I decided to go into shipbuilding and signed on as an apprentice with John Brown and Company, Clyde Bank Limited. I'd always been interested in ships, and uh, I had wanted to go in for ship management, but was discouraged and did the next best thing and went into shipbuilding and was taken on as a marine engineering apprentice. And that took about just over five years. I went to departments like the fitting shop, machine shops, boiler shop, foundry, pattern shop, fitting out on the ships and I finished up in the engine works design office. I hated getting up early because in those days one had to be at work at half past seven in the morning. When I started at first I had a trip around the yard and also onto the ships and in those days riveting was the main form of joining pieces of metal together so they would heat up the rivets and the boy would then throw a rivet to the riveter who would then place the rivet in a hole and the rivet would be drummed in. We'll burn and cut and shape and bend. We'll be welding and riveting and in the end when the painter dabs his final coat. We'll be launching the finest ever ship afloat. Thank you, Dad, for all your skill. Every so often the rivet would miss its target and would bounce from various staging planks and you had to keep your eye open for hot bits of metal flying around. This may be one reason why the gaffers wore bowler hats. I had a very good all-round training visiting all these different departments. Particularly when I was in the design office, we used to be involved in trials of the ships. This meant going away on them perhaps for four or five days, sleeping in rough and ready-made accommodation, being called out at all hours in the day to take readings for the boss and then one would spend perhaps the next few months working out the results and they were presented in a book and given to the owner. And I also enjoyed meeting some of the characters in the shipbuilding industry at Clyde Bank. On a Friday night, when I was working in John Brown's, there were perhaps about 8,000 people. And going out of the yard at 10 past five, most all these people, there would always be somebody with a large newspaper and pretending to read it. However, on closer examination, one saw a shiny mirror in between the pages. I was there for about five and a half years. The apprenticeship itself took five years and I left John Brown's because I had to do my national service and I was fortunate enough uh, to get into the Royal Navy. Sadly, I haven't got any of my original shipyard friends that I'm in touch with. Either they have died or they've emigrated or just lost touch, but fortunate that uh, being a volunteer at the tall ship, I meet with the uh, other volunteers who have worked in the shipyards when it was the good old days when they were busy. But I think it forms part of the tall ship scenario that records and presentations are made about the days when Clyde shipbuilding was a very important industry not only to the west of Scotland, but to the United Kingdom.
We've worked and sweated and toiled and now See the expert's hand from stern to bow She's ready for the tournament, so the sea She's a credit to the Clyde and you and me Thank you, Dad, for all your skill But the Clyde is a river that'll no stand still You did gay well, but we'll do more Make way for the finest of them all, Q4 